Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you my homemade magnetohydrodynamic drive and showing you how it actually works. So magnetohydrodynamics is something that has been popularized in a lot of fictional films. For example, in The Hunt for Red October, they make a submarine that's driven by magnetohydrodynamics. Now let me show you what this actually means. So whenever you move an electric charge through a magnetic field, it causes that electric charge to curve. And you can make use of that. In fact, that's the way that modern motors work. Electric motors work by passing current through a wire that's in a magnetic field, and it causes a force on that wire. You can make a really simple motor like this, but the motors work by using electrons in a solid metal. But what if you don't want to use electrons in a metal? Well, you can actually use ions in water. For example, I have my giant neodymium magnet below here that's going to supply a really strong magnetic field. And then I just have two bars of aluminum that I'm going to connect to some power. Now normal water doesn't have a lot of ions in it. There's only a small amount of hydroxide ions and hydrogen ions in there. However, even though it's only a small amount, watch what happens when I turn on my power. So when I turn on the power, it's going to cause the hydroxide ions to move to the positive electrode and the H plus ions to move to the negative electrode. And so there's going to be a flow of charge. And what that causes is the ions to move at right angles to the direction of the electric current. So without any moving parts here, we can actually get water to slightly flow. But the real interesting part happens is when we actually put more ions in the water, we can actually get a higher electric current to go through it because we have more ions in there. So now watch what happens when we have salty water. <laughs> Whoa, look how fast it's flowing. So there's absolutely no moving parts here and the water's just flowing as if there's a pump pushing it, but there's no pump whatsoever. So this is called magnetohydrodynamics. Now the amount of water flow is dependent on the strength of the magnetic field and also the strength of the electric field. So the closer you move your electrodes, the higher the current's going to be and so the faster the water flow is going to be. So if you move them really close together, you can really get that water to shoot through there. Okay, now let's move them even closer together and see how fast we can actually get this. So this is so cool. With no moving parts whatsoever, you can just shoot water through a channel. I can adjust the speed of it by adjusting the amperage here. Turn it down, the water flows down. Turn it up, speeds up. So although we are getting the water to move, it's not moving the water very efficiently. You can see that a lot of energy is lost into making these bubbles on the electrodes. Now these are actually bubbles of hydrogen and oxygen forming here. And actually because we have a chloride ion in the water, it's actually making chlorine gas as well. And you can actually get the flow of the liquid to change directions depending on how you switch the electrodes. So if I switch the positive and negative, the water will flow in a different direction. So the cool thing about this is you don't just have to use water, you can put any conductive liquid in there. So even if I put liquid gallium in there, it should shoot the liquid gallium through the channel there. Okay, let's try it with the liquid gallium. Let's see what happens here. Whoa. There we go. So the gallium is way more dense, so it's harder to get it to flow through there. Now you can do this a lot easier if you just get the gallium to flow in a circle. So in this setup, I just have circular electrodes with an outer and an inner electrode so that it just makes the gallium flow in a circle. Now in this setup that I've shown here, my magnet is below the water. But to make something that actually is driven by this force, you need to put your magnet on the thing that's floating in the water. So all I have here is a nine volt battery connected to my two electrodes here. And then I have my magnet covered in tape in the center here. It's a little boat that can float in the water. 
So when I put it under the water, the electrodes now work and it shoots water out the back here and propels it forward. Start at, start at the back and it moves forward. Let's put it in the bathtub so you can see it move a little bit better. So you can see in this magnetohydrodynamic drive here that it's not very efficient because it's creating all these bubbles that are using the energy not to propel it forward but just to make these gas bubbles. So for this reason and the reason that you're limited by how much current you can flow through it in, if you're going to use it in seawater or something, there's not been a very many large mock-ups of a magnetohydrodynamic drive. They're not very efficient, they don't work very well, but they do work. And the cool thing is you don't just have to use them on liquid, you can use them on gases too that are ionic. So there's actually potential to use plasma propulsion engines that use the same principle here. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Remember, if you haven't checked out theactionlab.com, I have two experiment boxes for sale there, a vacuum chamber box and a self-pouring fluid box that's really cool. So check out theactionlab.com. These boxes make a great holiday gift if you haven't bought anything for someone that's interested in science or engineering. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and hit the bell to be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.